hello there and welcome to another great video game ideas now used video gbginu for short um i actually literally just got through watching the whole sony e3 press conference because i didn't have the chance to watch it last night <laughs> so i'm kind of happy i did i mean i've always been kind of critical of sony now i'll admit that even though I've never really been like a hater of Sony, but then again, I'm critical of every console gaming company there is. So, it's just how I am. <clears throat> but, Sony really took some shots at Microsoft during their press conference. I mean, they literally, and literally pointed out, <laughs> it, was just, it was just so comical when you look at it and you think about all the things that Microsoft wanted to introduce with the Xbox One and Sony is kind of just like well fuck that shit we're not doing it and then on top of that they're undercutting Microsoft's price with a console that might actually be more powerful than the Xbox One I mean not that power really is apparent to me as long as they have the games that I want to play and so far Sony is making good on that I mean, yeah, there are some games that I'm going to want to play on Xbox One, but I'm probably not likely to purchase one. At least not until... I mean, at least, at the very least, that online restriction has to be taken away. That 24-hour check-in so that you can actually play your games. That definitely has to be changed. And I would like to be able to trade games off with friends and not have to worry about who's playing not have to worry about not being able to get my game back. It's just basically. But, uh, gosh, man, there's just... I know there are going to be a lot of people who actually do purchase the Xbox One. And I'm not going to fault them for that because they feel like it's a worthwhile investment to them. Okay, that's fine. I'm not here to shoot down anybody's choice. That's their choice. That's their decision. They can go with it. Now, <clears throat> I, on the other hand, will probably be getting a PS4, and I have a 360. I didn't get a PS3 yet, not because I didn't want to, but hey, I've been broke, so I've been just trying to get games off the cheap pretty much, so I haven't been able to buy another console, but since I have a feeling PS3 is going to have a price drop really soon, I'm going to get that, and I'm going to end up picking up a lot of games for that, and then probably will be getting a PS4 next year. I know I'm not going to adopt any console early on this time around because I want to wait for more options for games to be out before I do. So that'll give me time to hit up my back catalog of games and things like that, but uh, Microsoft, you fucked up. You gave Sony the opportunity to steal the spotlight and they ran with it. They really did. I mean, like, like I said, they pointed out key things that people have been bitching about <laughs> with the Xbox One, myself included. <laughs> it's just the used game restriction, the restriction on trading and buying and selling games, and the 24-hour check-in access. I mean, yeah, there are a few features that the Xbox One has that the PS4 doesn't. At the same time, those features aren't really worth it enough to justify the Xbox One over the PS4. That's pretty much it. It's just it's not enough. I'm like, hell, I can trade off a game to a friend and they can play it at their house and give it back to me. Why the fuck not? But that all boils down also to what producers decide they're going to do. Because I do remember Sony saying that they really didn't care about the whole DRM thing, they weren't going to enforce it. Now, there would, there could be the case that games that end up on Xbox One and PS4, depending on the company, might actually have the DRM for both. It's just how it is. I mean, I don't want to go in and say, oh yeah, Sony, fuck yeah, Sony did great. Well, they did a good job. And I actually do support their console the way it is. I'm actually happy with it the way it is. But, <clears throat> like I said, that all depends on what happens with it. 
I mean, if people were complaining the Xbox One looked ugly, I mean, PS4 honestly doesn't look that different than the Xbox One. I mean, it might be a little bit smaller and it's a bit sleeker, but they both kind of look the same. So, <laughs> I mean, even, even still, my money would go toward PS4 sooner than an Xbox One. It's just how I feel about it, and I'm pretty sure that's how a lot of people feel about it right now. I'm not going to lie or try to disguise it. That's how it is. It's just... Hey, we see the features that we want on this one, so we're going to go with that, this one. Simple. It's not very hard to figure out. It's not a, not a process you have to sit and think about for years upon years. It's clear cut. It's right there the way you want it. So, I mean, <laughs> and their pricing is, is honestly really competitive. So Nintendo is definitely going to have to drop the price of the Wii U. They have no choice. Seeing as PS4 is only $50 more at launch, they have no choice but to drop their price. They have to drop it at least $50 for each model. They don't have a choice. Right. Got briefly interrupted there. But, uh, yeah, Nintendo is definitely going to have to drop their price point for the Wii U <laughs> Basic and Deluxe. I almost said Super for some reason. But yeah, they're definitely going to have to drop the prices on those. They're going to have to drop them at least 50 bucks a piece. And it's just saying, saying PS4 is only 50 bucks more. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to pick that over the Wii U. Mostly because there are more third party developers publishing for the PS4. And on top of that, Sony is getting a lot of indie developers. People who actually, a few of them, actually used to make games, were making games for the Xbox 360. So that's, it makes you think. Seeing as PS4 is actually going to allow <laughs> indie developers to self-publish, whereas Xbox One isn't, and it costs more to get. Sony's going to have a bigger install base, as opposed to Xbox. Only people who are truly hardcore Xbox fans are more like are likely to pick up an Xbox One. And then there are the people who enjoyed playing on 360 who are going to jump over to Sony. And then, like I said, there are all around people who play games like I do. Who are just going to say, well, fuck it, between the two, I'm going to get PS4. It's pretty much. So, I mean, I have yet to watch the Nintendo Directs because I haven't seen very many that have hot shown anything that I didn't already know about, so I didn't want to watch them just yet. But I'm probably going to take a day and sit through what Nintendo has to offer or on YouTube and give my say about that. But, yeah, I'm looking at this and it's like, well... Microsoft, you did shot yourself in the ass. Xbox One could have been awesome beyond belief, but you made so many mandatory features and things that people didn't really care for. At least the majority of people who play games. I mean, I want a console to be able to play my games, whether it's online or offline, especially if, I, if I'm playing a game that has an amazing single-player experience. I don't want that to be blocked if my internet goes down and I can't log in. It just, it it sucks that that happens. And I would be very angry that I couldn't enjoy my game. <laughs> I would be livid that I couldn't enjoy my game because the console didn't get to check in and 24 hours had passed. It, was, it, would, it would suck. And, and I'm not saying my internet goes out on a constant basis, but it happens every once in a while where I don't have, I don't have internet service for like a day. Or maybe two days. Sometimes it happens. It's You can't make a requirement like that and then expect everyone to support it. It's just not going to happen. I mean, like I said, there are plenty of people who will adopt Xbox One and will enjoy it. And I'm not going to fault those people for that. I'm not going to say, hey, you deserve the worst as far as gaming. I'm just going to say, look... I feel I am making the better choice for me. If you don't like that choice, then fine. 
I don't like your choice. Fine. You made the choice you wanted to make as a gamer. I'm going to make mine. It's just, it's a pitiful thing to see <laughs> that Sony was able to jab at Microsoft directly like that. And I'm just, I'm befuddled a bit. Because it's like, they had all of the tools. And they had everything lined up. To make a big splash and do it in a way that people would have praised them for fucking years. And they decided that they were going to implement these things in their console. Which, I mean, it's fine in a way that they did it. Because, I mean, eventually it's going to get that way anyhow. But you have to let gamers make the transition toward these things themselves. You can't force it upon the industry especially in the console market when there are so many people who are dependent like who can't purchase games like they want to I mean with PC gaming it's a bit different because they don't necessarily have to have a disc it can be directly installed on the computer <clears throat> at any time and play without a disc and for the most part I mean, with, take a look at Steam. Honestly, you can get deals on Steam for years to come on fucking top-notch AAA games. On great, innovative indie games. Not going to be able to get that so much with console games. It's just not something that's going to happen much. And that's just how it is. It's, it's not that way right now. And plus, the mandatory install with the... The hard drive space, I mean, that might be a problem, especially if each game is taking, like, 30 to 40 gigs of space when it's on there. Like, <clears throat> uh, just simple math. If you take, say, every game is going to be, like, about 50, 50 gigs of memory, and you have to install your games on your console that's only 10 games that you can install I mean that's a bad example but you it shows the limitation of having to mandatorily install every game to your console and it's just not something a lot of people are going to be super hyped about I'm pretty sure Sony's going to do it too but with the fact that they aren't doing the exact same things that Microsoft is doing will probably benefit them now, heck, maybe Sony might even just do partial installs on their consoles. That way, people can would still have a use for the disc, but it would also allow for the games to be optimized to play. Uh, but, we'll see how this generation turns around. I mean, people are shooting down the Wii U already. Like, There's no point in shooting down a console when we haven't seen it at its fullest potential yet. And it's the same thing. I mean, Xbox One, I'm not shooting the console itself down. I'm shooting down the decided upon features that are being added to it that really a lot of people wouldn't want. I mean, yeah, there are going to be so, there are so many people who say, well, it's just, an, it's just online, but there are so many people who don't have broadband internet still. And then there are so many people who can't use a mobile phone or a mobile internet device because of how much it costs to have it. This is like this they're making people double dip on a lot of shit just to be able to use the Xbox One. Whereas PS4, if you get the system, you take it home, you plug it in and turn it on, you are going to play games on it. No matter what. No matter whether or not you have internet service, you're going to be able to play games on it. And then think about the fact that you can't travel your Xbox One with you, especially if there is no internet connection. I mean, and this is, the console is going to have an internal clock, so if you are going somewhere where you will temporarily not have internet connection, you can't play your games at all. Plus, honestly, 
a lot of the games that are coming out on Xbox One, I'm already going to want to get I already that I already want. I know what we get on the PS4. It's just how it is. I mean, they're the exclusives that are on Xbox One. Those are the games I'm going to miss out on. I'm going to be unhappy that I missed them, but you know what? If it proves to Microsoft that they made a shitty move and they update their software in a way that gets rid of this always online crap and would allow allow for gamers to trade and share their games with, with their friends without having to have them in a spe- specified list, I can see a bunch of people hurt, jumping back over to Microsoft. <clears throat> But they will also have to, like, kind of, you know, kill the Xbox Live price, the Xbox Live Gold price. And now that I talked about that, Sony, they were smart about this. They made the announcement along with their, their kicks to Microsoft. But they are adopting the same formula that, that Microsoft used for Xbox Live Gold. Whereas you can play, you can do all of the stuff that doesn't require online without a PlayStation Plus membership. But you have to get one for online multiplayer and things like that. And that they did say that in their press conference. And I don't know how many people really cared because, <laughs> because a lot of people were looking like, well, shit, they're not doing this shit. So, hey, win-win for me. So honestly, I'm looking like, well, they just decided to turn PlayStation Plus into pretty much what Xbox Live Gold was. And they did it at the right time, too. They they did it at such a perfect time. It was just like, it was slid right in there. Like, so... They were very sly about that. But, uh... <laughs> I, I'm pretty much done talking. I've had enough to say about it. So I'm not going to keep pushing on the subject. And Microsoft, as much as I want to see the Xbox One do well, I don't think it's going to this holiday season with the way the PS4 is looking. And yes, there will still be a bunch of people hopping to, to the Wii U. As many people as as much as people wish to, to wish that Nintendo would fall out of the console market, it's probably not going to happen anytime soon. It would take some really amazingly fucking awesome shit to to stop that from happening. I mean, to stop them from making to from stop to stop them from being in the console market. And I mean, and honestly, you think about it, the Wii U isn't as far behind in technology as people might think. It's just that it's more comparable to Generation Seven technology than it is Generation Eight. But we, like I said, we haven't actually seen it at its fullest potential, so I'm not going to count Nintendo out just yet. We'll see what happens as the games come out for it and see how well those do. Other than that, that's my, that's the end of it right here, there. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed listening to, uh, listening, wow, listening to me chatter on and... Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and check out Nintendo's stuff and see what they're putting out <clears throat> and make my decisions from there. Anyhow, keep your eyes out for my videos. Until next time, enjoy your games.